My name is Ashley Nemeth and I am the Program Lead in Community Engagement at CNIB Regina. So what exactly do you do here then? So I've helped develop some of the new uh, programs for our new foundation and kind of get them up and going and get people involved um, with those programs. Okay. So why is this new programming happening? A lot of our clients within our strategic plan meetings had indicated that there was a piece missing to what we were offering. So there was that quality of life piece missing. Um, they were getting the rehab side that they always needed, but there was that quality of life piece that just wasn't there. So these programs are to help with the quality of life for those people. So to give them the opportunities to engage in activities that any sighted person would be able to do and just have them have those same opportunities that anybody else would have. And about why these support programs are needed, these new ones. Okay. So the support programs are an important part of vision loss because with vision loss there's grief and there's you know learning to live your life a new way. So with these new support programs people are able to gain their confidence and self-esteem but also help them to work through that grief process um, that comes along with vision loss and for everybody that's different. So having those support programs is really important to connect with others who are going through the same thing and just have that inclusive support system. Okay, well let's talk about each of the programs individually and then talk about the highlights of those programs. So tell me about the peer support program, like who and why would people go to this group? So our peer support program is aimed towards people who are 55 and over. Um, who are new to vision loss or still struggling with vision loss. So we really focus on independence and getting them their independence back. Many of the clients um, within that group are have lost their vision later in life. So they're still going through that grief process and learning those skills that they need to be independent and do some of the things that they used to do. So we touch on topics about um, cooking and traveling alone and white canes and personal safety, but we also really focus on the grief aspect and accepting our vision loss and living life with vision loss. Okay. Um, can you share maybe, um, you know, without of course going into any personal comments, but in general, what are some, some of the conversations, because you've been a part of that group for a while now, um, before you worked for CNIB, you volunteered to lead that group. So what, are, what were some of the important conversations that you feel happened um, in the past in that group? I think some of the most important ones that I've you know been a part of or witnessed were when clients say they stopped baking or they stopped doing family meals because of their vision loss because they thought they couldn't do it anymore and just being a part of the group they've now discovered that yes they can do it and they have you know begun to bake and they've begun to have family meals for their family again or they've you know taken upon themselves to now go out and do their grocery shopping on their own because they've you know realized that they can do it um, they might have to do it differently but they still can so those those are so important and I think that's kind of what helps you know keep this group going is that people are always discovering things that they thought they couldn't do anymore and finding ways that they can do it okay and so is there also like talk to me about the peer support aspect like why is it important for people to get together with other people who've had vision loss I think it's important because it's that social inclusion aspect. When you go out with a group of people and you're the only blind person, sometimes it can be a little bit isolating. So it's nice to be able to get together with a group of people who are going through the exact same things you are, have the same frustrations, and sometimes you just need to be able to laugh about it. So, you know, whether it's you tripped over a fire hydrant or, you know, you lost your medication on the floor or whatever it might be, um, it's good to be able to laugh about it with a bunch of other people who just understand and who get it and you're never the different one out. You're all, you're all the same. Okay, so peer support was a program that existed before, but it's continuing. Let's talk about one of the new programs that we're, we're launching this year, the Care Partners Program. Who and why would people go to this group? So Care Partners is the opposite of our peer support. So Care Partners is for the loved ones of those people attending peer support or just somebody who's um, blind or partially sighted. Mm -hmm. So their loved ones can come and find out how they can best support somebody with vision loss, how to make their home accessible, but also a huge part of it is how to encourage independence and not have that person rely on them 
to be their eyes and how you know wanting them to do the things on their own and how to encourage that as well as to work through their own grief because the grief process isn't only just for the person with vision loss it affects the whole family so making sure that we're addressing the grief and the and all of those aspects with vision loss with the whole family so this is for the rest of the family and they can work through that why is it important for the care partners to learn that they need to step back with um, their loved ones who are having vision loss? Like, why is that an important thing? I think it's important because when we see our family members struggling, our instinct is to do everything for them and to help them. But that actually doesn't help the person with vision loss. It just makes them feel helpless and it makes them lose their independence. They're still an adult and they still want to live a full life they just have to figure out how to do it. And if somebody's always doing everything for them, they're never gonna gain those skills to be independent. And one day when you're not around to make them tea or to find their black pants, they're not gonna know what to do and they're not gonna be able to do that on their own. So I think it's important that people learn independence and learn skills to be able to live independently. Oh, excellent. So let's talk about another program that has existed for a while, but we are we are looking for volunteers for and that we're re-engaging people with, and that's the Vision Mates program. Who and why would people go to this group, like, or to, would utilize this volunteer program? Sorry, Vision Mates is a great program, and it's um, where we match a sighted individual with a blind or partially sighted individual. And they do many different things. So the vision mate can assist with grocery shopping or maybe they're sorting mail or reading the newspaper or reading a book that the um, client is unable to access, you know, through audiobook or uh, some other format that they can access. Um, or sometimes it's just having tea or going for a walk or a lot of those things. A lot of the vision mate is just having that companion, somebody to get out and do things with and to have some time with and do some of those fun things that they wanted to do before. And we're currently looking for volunteers to become vision mates? Yeah, so we have a list of people, of clients who want to have vision mates, but we're always looking for people who would love to be a vision mate and to give back to the community. So we are always, always looking for people who want to volunteer. Excellent. Um, so tell me about, I'm excited about this program in particular. I think it's huge for our clients. Um, uh, tell me about the Youth Leadership Program. Who and why would people go to this group? So Youth Leadership is for clients who are 15 to 21 years old. And it is a amazing program, I think, personally for learning so many different skills from self-confidence to advocacy and pre-employment skills and the social aspect of life as well. Um, so it's a great program for kids to learn or youth to learn how to effectively advocate. There's a right and a wrong way to advocate. So it's a great way to teach uh, youth how to do it the right way. Um, as well as pre-employment skills like interview skills. When do you tell a future employee that, or employer that you have a disability? When do you disclose that? How do you disclose that? What are some of those social nuances that you're missing? Are you looking in the direction of the person talking to you? You know, are you doing some of those odd things that a sighted person would think, hmm, what's going on there? All of those kinds of things and as well as connecting with other youth who are blind and partially sighted so that they have that same kind of we can laugh about it and we can you know vent our frustrations and and work through some of those things why is like tell me from your own personal experience why a program like this would have been great for you when you were younger like why is this program so important I'm really excited about this program because when I was 15 I was shy and I didn't advocate for myself and I didn't have a voice and I didn't find my voice until I was around 26. And I think how much farther, how much easier things would have been had I found my voice and had I had the confidence to be a confident, independent, blind woman, um, blind youth. I think that finding your voice is a huge part, whether it's advocating for or using your voice for the whole blind community as a whole 
or using your voice for yourself and advocating for the things that you need to be independent. It doesn't matter either way, you need to find your voice. And I think that it's an important thing for youth to be able to find their voice early. And why, why um, do people from uh, this community have to advocate so much? Every day when you leave the house, you're an unwilling advocate for blind people when it comes to stereotypes and misperceptions, whether it's you know, somebody thinking that um, you can see and you're perfectly fine, or if it's somebody who tries to haul you off across the street because they feel like you aren't capable of crossing a street by yourself or petting your guide dog or, you know, why you need assistance at the grocery store or the restaurant or any of those places, you know, when you're needing directions or you're always kind of getting questions and comments from people and having to advocate for what you need and what you don't need. So it's a skill that is definitely needed to be learned. Uh, talk to me about the Beyond the Classroom program. Who and why would people go to this group? Our Beyond the Classroom program is for parents of kids from kindergarten to grade 12. And it's a great